All right, this is a reasonably decent start for this new video. I just picked up a four inch long arm lift kit. So obviously it's used and a little bit crusty looking. So hopefully by the end of this video, I can have all this stuff put on the truck. I expect it to take a couple weeks because, you know, I'm gonna have to get all this crap off here. Paint the springs blue, paint those blue. I don't know if I'll need the leaf springs or not. Those just get painted black. And then, you know, what's this thing? Yeah, so I guess to keep it from bottoming out. And then there's a Pittman arm in here. Um, so, yeah. Also, what we're going to be working on, we're going to make this truck a dually. So, hopefully, you saw the last video. Right at the end of it, I picked up all this stuff. So, we got dually wheels and then two super singles and then two fenders that were sandblasted and then the guy left it sitting outside but these are the best ones out of the bunch there's a few little spots in there um anyway i started to polish these earlier i did i actually did not polish one of those i cleaned one of them and then uh found out that it's a lot worse under all the dirt than i realized these are durabrites they're pretty good shape they're just dirty the only one i've done so far is the one under this one and um that's gonna be one of my outers because it's not all tattered up on the rim or on the edge of the rim these are really pretty good shape let's go over here so here's this thing let's see i don't know maybe this is one i wipe down yeah this one because this one's a durabrite and that one is not a Durabrite, but I did not realize that when I bought them. This one I wiped down. Looks like it's still got some foggy stuff on there from the soap residue, but it's uh, it's got some scratches in there. So I may have to, uh, and some pitting. So I may really have to put some effort in on this one. But... That's the goal, at least. We're gonna try to make this truck a dually. It's gonna be pretty sweet. All right, we got one down. That's about what this one looked like when I started. So, uh, turned out pretty good, I'd say. This wasn't that bad hard. Everybody was like, oh, this is going to be so hard to do. I mean, this is this rim's not perfect, you know, after all this. These obviously were trailer tires, and they got some spots in them. But, uh, I mean, I'm happy with it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do the inside ones. That one's for sure going to be an outside. I guess I could go ahead and clean up this outer area. Let's see, some of these had some spots in them, like that right there. But these are really pretty pretty good shape. These, though, they got, like, lines. You can see there from it being milled. So if I sand on it, then uh, those lines will be gone. And then, you know, that's only where I sand on it. So I'd have to, like, do the whole thing. But this one's pretty well perfect. I mean, there's some spots there, but they're not going to be, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's a few little spots in most of them. One of them was pretty good. It's got a pretty good ding in it. Yeah, it's right there. So that'll be an inner for sure. This might be my other outer because it looks like it's pretty good. Um, this is going to be one of the outers, I guess. Yeah, this one's got some spots in it too. So that'll be an inner. So these two, that one I've already polished. I'll go back and I'll wipe all the residue out of it. And then that one is going to be the one I do after this here.
Well, here's these two. That looks pretty good. This one is just a regular Alcoa. That one is apparently a Durabrite. I did not realize that when I got them. This one was definitely easier to clean. But once I got all the black residue off this one, it, it looks pretty good. Yeah, they look about the same. There's not too much difference other than the fact that this one's kind of just got spots in it. But uh, this one turned out pretty good. I'm happy with them. So now the uh, back wheels. So some notes on this lift kit. I kind of mocked it up under here earlier um, and was just trying to figure out how it was gonna work. And so the one, there's big brackets that bolt to the cross member and it looks like I'm gonna have to drill three holes kind of like that. So it also looks like the skid plate, I'm either gonna have to trim it or trim the lift, otherwise the skid plate is not gonna be there. Um, because it's kind of bulky, that bracket is. Also, I moved my cab mount backwards to fit this Chevy cab. The top arm may hit like this area, but I wasn't gonna take my skid plate off and all that and throw that bracket up there just yet because um, obviously it needs blasted and painted. So I think I'm gonna take these Get them blasted. Don't think I'm going to need the rear leafs. I had these out over here. I done took one apart. Took the bushings out of it. You can see here, this one's already been done. They're 180 bucks. I'll probably just buy new ones. That's for good for good measure. I mean, I got this so cheap. I was just looking. This is a BDS long arm lift conversion. Uh, four to six inch. So, I got the four inch one. That's all I wanted, you know. It has this forward rake and I hate it. Of course, if you guys remember watching this channel a while back i put the two and a half inches on the back because i did do two and a half inches on the front and it sat perfectly level but it was too low back here to be pulling a trailer with so the rear is about the height that i want now and then the front it just has that rake and i do not like it So last night I sanded all these pieces that I'm able to do without the sandblaster. So I'll take all that to get sandblasted probably Monday. And today what we're gonna do, we're gonna make the crew cab a, uh, a proper Dodge Cummins. Just kidding, definitely not. Uh, but what we are gonna do is take the wire. I've already done this on the other side. So the wire that controls that, I have to take out of this harness because it's got the little plug here that fits into this body control module also what I'm going to be doing is taking the wiring out of this door panel the speaker I'm going to see if I can get both of these done today that'd be awesome probably be taking the doors off to do this that one I can do here but just to keep dust out of the truck cut this cut right there probably have to take the dash out that's gonna be fun and then same thing back here I'm gonna mount this wire to my pillar because it's just stuff behind this right now and then that one 
Same thing on that side. We'll see how far we get. I'm thinking I'll do the bear claw thing up here on this door. I may not do it on the rear doors because that's a lot of extra effort. We'll see though, because it is very nice, the, the bear claw thing on the driver's side, which this one's not finished either. But it latches real nice and easy. And it opens real nice and easy and that controls the lights and of course the one that comes out of the mirror is my puddle lights which i got one wired up in there but i took the bulb out because i needed it for something else and then at the uh, rod run in pigeon forge i bought these things so these are going to be my running lights i got a handful of them here some are smaller than others the big ones may end up being inner fender lights we'll see In the fields of bodies burning As the war machine keeps turning It's nice when you learn to do stuff the easy way The uh, last time I did this I put this in after I'd had the door all together So I had to fish these wires from the inside of the door now, so this is the one that goes to the running light, or the, the puddle lights. So I plugged it into the body control module, and now I'm just running it back up this wiring harness, and I'm gonna put it through this thing that goes through the door.
All right, here's progress. I don't even remember if I videoed, but I had the door off and all that. Cut this hole. Had the dash down. Um, yeah. So I got all this side put back together. And while I was at it, I also ran these lights. So that's done. Speakers work. I don't have my... Um, this thing on this side yet so that is what controls the lights off of this side like if i was to open just this door but the other one's hooked up so it does control this side and i just redid the other side with the uh the thing so with the matching light i'm getting at that's what i meant so hold on so yeah here's this one so you open the door comes on all right so the other side should be on i think they only stay on for a second that one's still going yeah that's already gone out wonder if there's a way to turn them on where they stay on i know when you close the door they come on yep well maybe this one just doesn't work <laughs> i know it does though hold on so that one's on. There it is. This time we are fast enough to get over here. So anyway, the cool thing right here, we have a radio now as far as two speakers go. So. I drive an old Ford All right, well, now I just got to figure out what I'm going to do for a radio because then I can finally finish up all that area on the dash. Um, now I'm kind of running out of time today. So what I was going to do next, obviously I need to get this done with that mechanism, but I'm going to try to tackle that all in a day, like a brand new day uh, where that's all I do. Since I figured out how to do that side where it was quite difficult, um, should be able to figure this side out within a day. I had to modify a bunch of good stuff in there. So for now, the uh, the back one, I'm going to put lower. Um, the other ones were up here. Nice. <laughs> but this, this is going on up here, you know. So uh, yeah, let's see where this is. So it's about right where the door comes in. So we're not going to do that. Make it easier just to put it down here in the door. There's quite a bit of space there. And all I'm really worried about back here is my speakers. Because as of right now, we're not doing power windows. And uh, the only other thing back there on the fourth gen would have been like a crash sensor, I think. So let's see the door panels right here. So, oh yeah, those. So maybe those power windows we're not going to worry about right now. Speakers. And um, I don't even see an ABS crash sensor or whatever the other thing had. There was another sensor that was like down here on the front door panels. So I think on the driver door, it's just an open wire. And I have that sensor in the glove box. And on this side, it's just dangling because um, the sensor is hooked up. But there's no airbags in this truck other than that one. Hopefully it doesn't blow in my face. That would really kind of suck. But um, so far that has not happened on the second gen, so we're just gonna we're just gonna hope that uh, we're good to go. But yeah, I guess that's what I'm gonna do now is start marking. I may even cut this hole and stick the speaker in there. All right, we're back at it. It's a few days later because of good old work taking up my whole weekend, 13 hour shifts. So anyway, this thing, one of my buddies um, is doing a. He's, he's got the P-pump off of his truck. He's just got a 12-valve. So anyway, I got a bunch of timing stuff that he wants to borrow from where I did this. So I guess he is going to come borrow. I think this is all he needs. That right there. Um, that's obviously just, just to, to time it. Um, so anyway, he is the guy that has the wiring harness for this thing sitting in his buddy's garage because he gave him the front forks of this CBR motorcycle. So I was like, 
you know, you need the timing stuff. So how about you finally go get those front forks and the wiring harness? Because somewhere in this gom of mess, there's a plug that's unplugged and that goes to the handlebars and the key switch. And supposedly this thing fires right up when that's plugged in with the battery, of course. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the reason why I haven't messed with this and because I'm more worried about the truck, but uh, we'll see. I think that's about to happen. This is all that I got done the other day um, before I had to close up shop for the day. I cut out a new one of these and I traced my speaker. I used, I used this thing to make the corners. So I traced the corners like that and um, filed them down and then obviously this and then I lowered it just a little bit. I'll probably just cut out, you know, the top and the bottom because this is gonna be covered anyway. <clears throat> Um, because obviously I had it higher and then I moved it down a little bit to center it because I had to trim off some of the edge. But anyway, um, that is for this side. And I did make one for the driver's side, but I'm going to remake all of them. That one there, I'm more happy with. So I'm going to probably trace it again because it's a nice symmetrical shape. The one on the driver's side, I just kind of had a random scrap piece that was, you know, kind of this shape. And I just... uh used it for mock-up but i think that's fine i mean it's not like perfectly the same shape as that corner but uh i think that'll be fine you know if it looks stupid then i'll do this again so i reckon i'll get that cut out i may not even do that i'm kind of worried about doing my rear door right now i'm getting all four of the speakers in this thing and then you know i'll probably just zip tie that up where it's not gonna rattle out i know that's really <laughs> redneck and kind of half ass but um that's gonna work until i get another radio and i don't know what i'm gonna do for a radio yet you know the problem with those touchscreen radios whenever i get a phone call or something and i just like to flip the thing and turn it down real fast the flat screen ones you gotta boop 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 and turn it down it takes forever so um i don't know we'll see I mean, if the aux cord thing on that worked, there, I'd use it for sure. There was no, I definitely would use it, but aux cord does not work. So I think that's what I'm going to do right now is just start cutting on this door and this pillar. Well, I reckon change of plans. One of my buddies called me, needs a, a car moved. So I got to, got to go do that. Couple shots of chill patrol to the prettiest thing that you've ever hit on. So this, um, yeah, so I guess we'll take the uh, harmonic balancer thing to my buddy while he's down there, the magnet, a different guy, and then uh, we got the highest quality radio mount in all of the Midwest, zip tied straight to the dash with some blocks. It'll make do for a day or two. Until I get back home, I'll finish putting that speaker in. I was really excited to work on this today, but, um, duty calls I suppose last night I finished up my rear door here I like the way this one turned out I put this higher than this because on the front, um, they were like basically the same height and they're kind of binding up a little bit. Um, but it does work. But this one, I like this one a lot. That one turned out good. Uh, so now I'm gonna work on that side over there today. I got the speaker in and I cut this thing out and I traced uh, some more on that piece of wood over there. So, Just like that, pretty much, you get the idea. And then it'll be covered like that one. Um, yeah, so we're gonna work on the other side today. It really wasn't that bad to get this done. Today, I plan on getting that done for sure, getting all four of these put on. Um, then, I don't know, I guess we better figure out something else to do because we. this is the morning. We got all day. I guess uh, we can maybe work on this. We'll see.
All right, so I got, I had this door off, did the whole procedure, got the speaker mounted, got my wiring put together through the pillar here. So I'm gonna run this up and put an 8L clamp up here to hold it and tape this. And then this thing was on it to keep it stiff. Uh, so I'll cut it, you know, about four inches and I'll put it back on this section here. And um, let me go over here. I'll show you basically what I did on this side. And then I'll put my seat belt back on, on this stud that I welded in down here. So when I made these pillars, I'm gonna try to explain some things here for people that's wondering like how I did this. Uh, the pillar here, I had a pretty thick piece of steel. It actually came off the C60 dump bed. Um, it was like a, almost like a C-channel piece. And I trimmed down the C-channel part of it. And then it fit in here. And it goes all the way up to about halfway. And I made the bottom half of these pillars first. Um, and then once I got all this done, I made these skins. And there are two pieces of 18 gauge put together. So this is pretty thick right through there. If you can even see. Let me, uh, I'm blocking all the light. Let me find a little flashlight. So, yeah, you can kind of see, it's pretty thick. So I wanted this to be pretty structurally sound. I lost the pin for this. That was a big deal. Uh, those extra 64 doors that I have off that red cab that I got, that I hauled home in the bed of the orange truck at one time, if y'all saw that video. It was where I got these extra um, stops from. These are a big deal because obviously you don't want your door getting damaged by swinging too far open. Right now we got a lot of travel, but it also, I lost the pin, so I'll have to find that. I have to go to the hardware store anyway because I need some speed nuts for up here. When I mounted this first speaker, it, I cut the hole out big and I wanted just the front to stick out and this to be mounted behind the door. Um, so that way it was almost a flush mount, but it is impossible to get in there to put screws and nuts on the back. So, all right, this hole's bigger. Everyone else is just sheet metal screwed into the door. Nice and easy like. And then that cover will go over it and it still won't be visible. So I'll just get some speed nuts and fix up this mess here. So the reason I was videoing this, I wanted to like show how I did this whole creation here. Um, so the this pillar is vertical on the rest of these trucks. So I leaned it back. And the way I did that just showing here people ask this kind of stuff all the time i made this piece and so i think this is the factory spot maybe and it just goes straight up behind all this mechanism just straight up to the top there so this thing i got 716 what are those quarter 20 that's what they are so quarter 20 through with a nut so basically makes it a stud and then this thing, I had to change that all around because I think it was riveted to this piece. Um, and so anyway, I drilled the rivets out, either tacked it or put screws in. I don't even remember. Let's see. Yeah, it's got screws on the back side, but it's, it's turned differently than it was. And um, obviously this is hitting that tooth right now and the window wouldn't move. But... Oh, the male lady's here. I was wondering what that was. Um... So this thing goes just like that. Can't do this looking through a screen. Okay. Well, I should have the tripod because this is a two-handed procedure apparently. There it is, kinda. So, and then those line up with those two screws. So all that stuff's just sitting down here. So that's how I did that. And the window obviously works because it's been used this whole time. Um, so it's not jamming up. So uh, 
That's how I did that. And then people think that I put the back door. This is a front door that's turned backwards. No. It is not. So this here, uh, obviously mounted right there, just the same. But I came back here, drilled some holes. Well, actually, I think this is my first attempt. I had this vertical in the back. I remember now. Yeah. Heck, this was last summer. so over a year ago. Anyway, yeah, this was vertical at one point. And um, I guess I think I did all this before I finally figured out how I was going to do my pillars. And obviously the outer valence thing on the pillar is still not welded on. The rest of it's solid for sure. All of that is. And I got to grind some welds off right there once I get all this done. But um, so this has that little area. And then the back of it's pretty well just straight up and down. So anyway, uh, the door does the same thing right there, goes out. So that gets it, the windows closer together and a little more symmetrical looking. The back door, the back window is still a hair a bit bigger. That's just the way it is. Um, but, you know, if I left this out and move that door forward, that pillar then it would the back window would be even bigger so anyway that's why i did everything like i did these lean that leans um after i put all this together i realized that 67 through 72 trucks also have a lean and their door does the same thing it curves and the pillar curves and so it's kind of similar to that i just didn't realize it when i did it at the time but yeah that's what i did i just took this out of the front turned it backwards had to bend it up and add to it same thing on the front i had to add that section in because when it was like that it just ends right there so added to it you know welded ground that down you can i mean you can tell that's bare metal but um then i had to get custom windows made i think all that was in an episode a few weeks ago whenever i had uh, all the wood in the windows and then it goes down and it just bolts right there same thing quarter 20 studs with nuts on the inside so that way you can stick this in stick it through the holes nice and easy and then uh nut it right there and then same thing just drilled holes that one i missed so i'm gonna have to repair that and then right there i actually got that one right the first time i need to get screws that match that one's different <laughs> anyway so that's how I did that. No, this is not a backwards door. And no, I'm definitely not ever going to make a suicide door truck because, well, I guess it depends on what I'm doing. I wanted this to be just like a modern truck. So just old 65 Chevy. So the doors open like this. Speakers are in the bottom of the doors. We're not going to have power windows as of right now. Um, yeah, I think that's really all I had as far as like showing you how I did this. I like how this turned out. I think I may have said that in the video last night. Ooh, that's nice. It actually stops now because this one didn't have a stop on it. So that's why I had the driver door all apart. I was putting that stop in there. This thing here, that looks really good. I like that a lot. I like that. This one, the, my, my door was the first try on everything. That's why the speaker wasn't perfect. And this wasn't quite perfect. Um, I just stuffed that in through there. And I'll probably make a plate that goes over and like has a circle in it so I can butt it up to this rubber. Um, a, a, a plate with a circle, cut the plate in half through the middle of the circle and slide it together and screw it to right there on the top and bottom. I guess that's how I'm going to clean that up. Um, yeah, so need to find the pin for this and then the... Uh, sheep or the speed nuts the nut plate type deal thanks for that and then i guess from there i need to clean up because that's probably where my freaking roll pin is that goes here i don't know it's probably under the mat or something in the truck i guess after that i'll finish making these all right all right good news good news we got speakers and all the doors. Hey, 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 hey,
Hi, this is Chuck at Superior Small Engines, your local dealer for outdoor power equipment. Like zero-turn mowers manufactured by Gravely. Gravely has been making power equipment for over 100 years. And with that kind of experience, they know how to make an excellent product. Gravely has a zero-turn that fits your needs and your budget. For smaller lawns, Gravely has the ZTX Residential Series. Built tough, but kept affordable. For mid-sized lawns, check out the beefed-up HD Series. And for the biggest, baddest lawn, the Pro Turn Series is the biggest, baddest zero Turn out there with zero percent. I got these stops on all of them now. That's uh, pretty important. And our service and parts departments will help keep your gravely mowing for decades. All right. So other things that I did. This was an open hole, so I went and got this thing. I took the stuff out of the back of it and just put it back in there, so that way the hole is filled for now. I thought about putting vents right there and here, kind of like the modern dash, because. If I mock up something like this fourth gen setup, the vents come out, the sides and the radio goes in the center, which I'm still gonna put the radio there. But I just put that plate back on. I lost the clips, so I super glued it, and it should be easy enough to pop off there with a flathead when the time comes. But once I get my radio, then I'll figure out how to do the rest of this dash. Um, anyway, put a spring on that because I cannot freaking stand uh, when these things don't open like they're supposed to. Anyway, the radio is rigged up for temporary time being in there. But uh, yeah, that that's gonna work for for right now. Looks reasonable. At your fingertips. Find out more about. So, yeah, buddy. Pretty easy. Keep it local. First, Harrison Bank. Number FDIC. Equal housing lender. Um, if you recently lost health Well, I reckon that is all for this week's video. I don't, uh, I didn't ever get my bars back. Well, the, the rest of the lift back from the uh, sandblast place. So I got my bars here. I sanded those, got the spots out of them that I was worried about. But the coil springs and the brackets and um, the rest of that stuff, I haven't heard back from the sandblast place yet. So we're gonna have to wait another week on getting that stuff done. I am not going to even attempt to start the dually process on this until you know the front's leveled and i at least have adapters at least have adapters and i'll put the super singles on there you know <clears throat> without tires because i still got to get tires and adapters they're sitting back here chilling so um the adapters i can at least mock it up and have the truck sitting on jack stands but i want to do at least that much before i mock up the fenders um probably even the tires because i really want to make sure i get this thing exactly how it's supposed to be the first time because those fenders are expensive and if i mess it up then that's going to be a lot of extra work or money so i think as of right now since it's going to be a lot more money to buy six tires and adapters um in the meantime i'm going to be working on the other things i need to get done so this will probably be next week's video so i'll put the bear claw latch in there and modify it to look uh kind of like the driver's side where i cut out you know you know what I'm getting at. But anyway, I haven't decided if I'm going to do the back doors yet. As far as that goes, I'm pretty sure I got them locked. Oh, speaking of them being locked. So, anybody that knows these old trucks, you push down on the handle. I ain't even got a handle sitting here. You, anyway, you push down on the handle, and it drives this rod back. And that locks the door, all right? So, it's like this one. Like, you can press the button, and it unlatches, but it does not open it will not open um so anyway these things are different i'll have to figure that out because on that side there's a keyhole on the outside you know right here so i can put my key in there and lock this so you can't push the button this side does not have that i'm sure they make them but uh anyway basically what i'm getting at is i won't be able to lock this door unless i make some more mechanism and the way this was designed being in a new truck it has the little thing that like that and it pops it up, you know? So I'll either have to integrate something like that in there or I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do yet. Uh, 
Um, as far as other things after that go, uh, I still need to do this because I never did do that uh, since I got back from the rod run. And then I need to put my my linkage on the centerpiece. Like I wired up all that stuff right before I went to the rod run because you know, I knew it was going to be raining down there. And then I forgot the linkage thing. So the motor works and then the linkage wasn't on there. And I brought my wipers with me, but they didn't do any good at all because I didn't have the linkage. So anyway, that remake these brackets because I had to shim them a little bit. And I was hoping, I, I mean, I really threw those together in a big hurry, but you know, I'll remake them. Um, and then as far as the thing after that, the next big deal project is going to be rockers on this side because i've still not done the rockers the bottom of this pillar is pretty gross looking let me unlock this door so i'll have to cut out this rotted section and that all came in the kit that i bought and i'll put that back in hopefully i get to that next week i'm being awfully optimistic here because next week i'm planning on working overtime just like this week um but yeah So that's how this one looks. I mean, there's some things that got to get done for sure. I think, honestly, the leveling kit's going to be, like, the biggest deal to me in the front because I cannot stand how it has this forward rake. And after I do that and get ball joints and wheel bearings put in, which I got sitting on the shelf over here, I might have them in the back of this truck. I don't know. Yeah, they're sitting somewhere over here on the shelf, I think. Yeah, there they are. Ball joints, wheel bearings for this rig. So all that's coming up in the future. Um, I think just leveling the front will improve the stance of this thing tremendously. And maybe at that point, I'm just like, no, I'm not going to make it a dually. Also, I'm going to make the long arm or the long track bars that go, you know, about the length of the back door to the rear end. So you got to make some of them things or find some for sale. But all that's coming up. We're working on it. I got a regular job just like everybody else, so it takes a lot of time to uh, do this in between. Got to fix airplanes most of the time just to afford doing this expensive thing. So anyway, in other good news, I'm sending a few hats out to some fans of this channel. So that's exciting. There's more for sale, hoodies and shirts as well. So don't be shy. You can text me or comment on the video. But anyway, that's all for this week.